Hello, this is Hope Katz Gibbs, host of the Grateful American Radio Show. We are here in New York City with my co-host, David Bruce Smith, founder of the Grateful American Foundation, with Gilder Lehrman Institute's president, Jim Basker. He's also the Richard Gilder Professor of Literary History at Barnard College at Columbia University, and we are in his New York City offices. Thank you for having us, and welcome to the show. It's great to have you here. I look forward to this. Before we jump in, let's tell the audience a little bit about Jim Basker. He's been president of Gilder Lehrman since 1997, where he has overseen the development of history education initiatives nationwide, including history high schools, teacher seminars, traveling exhibitions, digital archives, and the National History Teacher of the Year Award program. He's also served as project director for several history exhibitions at the New York Historical Society. Jim was educated at Harvard, Cambridge, and Oxford, where he was a Rhodes Scholar. He's taught for seven years at Harvard before coming to New York, and he has been a visiting professor at NYU, Cambridge University, and Rogue Community College in Oregon. If that's not all impressive enough, he was also the founder of Oxbridge Academic Programs, which has sponsored summer programs and teacher seminars in Oxford, Cambridge, Paris, and Barcelona for more than 20 years. So that really is just an amazing thing. So now we, we, David and I would love to talk to you a little bit about Gilder Lehrman so that our audience really understands what this institute is set up to do and what you've accomplished. So I'm going to throw the mic over to David. Jim, actually, I want to ask you two questions. The source of your interest in history and what Gilder Lehrman is all about. Well, I'll try to be simple about the first. You know, you think back in your life, when did you become aware of history or intrigued by it? My mother was an elementary school teacher, and she had five kids raising this, us in southern Oregon in a very rural community. But there was a gold rush town nearby called Jacksonville. And I think at about the age of seven, she took me for the first time to the museum there, which is artifacts from 1850s and 60s. And I can remember looking in a case, a dusty old-fashioned case in probably 1959 or so, and realizing, click, these people were 100 years ago. And it seemed magic to me. It was just fantastic. So I would credit my mother with kind of triggering that interest, and it's just been there ever since. So, Gilder Lehrman, you wanted to ask about how this bridge, my interest in history bridges over. Well, my career is as an English professor, although I've always been historically oriented, and um, my studies took me you know, to very historical places like Cambridge and Oxford. Um, but it was really because of um, contact with two philanthropists here in New York, Richard Gilder and Louis Lehrman who had, uh, by the early 90s, built up a very, very large collection of manuscripts, original manuscripts uh, of American history, uh, 65,000 of them, going all the way back to Washington, hundreds of letters of Washington, papers from the American Revolution and all the founders, um, Abraham Lincoln letters, Civil War soldiers letters. But what these two men wanted to do, rather than put their collection away in a vault, was to use it to improve K-12 history education across the country. So they brought me in, first as a consultant, and then as someone they wanted to lead the institute to build programs. How do we use these materials to reach teachers and empower them, give them resources in the classroom, deepen their knowledge of American history? How do we use them to reach students and even the general public across the country? So over the last 20 years, that's what we've been doing, is building programs, which we now have in all 50 states, thousands of affiliate schools and so on. have been very lucky. And, of course, I couldn't have done it without you know, 25 really superb colleagues who've been brilliant on every front of what we do. Okay, but let, let's just go back to that turnkey moment. There are, everybody has a turnkey moment in their lives. So let's just say your mother had not taken you to that dusty old town. Do you think you would have been gone along the historical path anyhow? Probably, because sooner or later it was going to happen. My father was, although he was an accountant, he had a personal interest in history that was very deep, and he was a reader. Uh, in fact, in the dining room in our old Victorian house, much to my mother's dismay, we had the Encyclopedia Britannica in a case in the dining room because when topics came up at the dinner table, my father would want to pull out the Encyclopedia Britannica 
and get the get the facts, get the truth. Um, so the interest was there in both of my parents from the beginning. Okay, so that career trajectory was English literature, right? Which is an indirect route through history. It right? was a bit of a failure. I have to confess, as a freshman in college, I was at Harvard, country boy from Oregon, scholarship boy there, eager to do what they had an elite major called history and literature, but only 12 students a year were admitted to it. I applied. I didn't get in. So I had to choose, and I went into the English major. My classmate, Walter Isaacson, did go into history and literature, and he's done fine. That's right. Still a good friend. So I had to choose a path, but I was always drawn back to an historical orientation. Uh, I've never been a literary theorist per se. I've always been interested in biography and the history, the production of texts and literature that went back into the Renaissance uh, and the 18th century. So, all right, let's go back now to Gilder Lerman. It's, it's what is the mission and has it gone the route that you anticipated or have you changed in midstream? Well, we've, the mission is to promote the study and the love of American history. Uh, especially K-12, to but globally, not only in the United States, but increasingly through the media internationally. It certainly has changed, David, as you know, with the kind of work that you do. You know, you try projects and see what works. New opportunities come along and you move in that direction. So certain genres of project have worked extremely well. Um, we have done, we've had partnerships with institutions like Mount Vernon, like Gettysburg, like the New York Historical Society, where we have exhibition cases where our materials from our collection are perpetually on exhibition. People can go to those institutions any day of the year and see manuscripts from the Gilder Lehrman collection. Those partnerships have been invaluable to us. We've developed traveling exhibitions, and we started with one. And would people be receptive to them? These are not the original artifacts, but they're facsimile exhibitions that travel in panels to small towns, to history centers, to schools, to churches all over the country. Well, the response to the first of them, which was actually an exhibition of Alexander Hamilton back in 2004, was so strong that we now have 10 different thematic traveling exhibitions in a total of about 30 sets traveling nonstop and they're booked out months in ahead, ahead. So we have about 130 communities a year that host a Gilder Lehrman traveling exhibition. We developed an affiliate school program, which hadn't been part of my original vision. We had history schools in New York that had a, an American history curriculum, and that, that was great, but they're resource intensive, and we can only do a, a limited number. I wanted eventually to reach every school in America because American history matters in every school in America. So with the help of a grant from the NEH about six years ago, we started an affiliate school program that in three and a half years reached the goal that was set for five years of 2,500 schools. As I speak to you, it's now over 5,000 schools, and it's growing the rate of something like 100 a month. But affiliate schools are a network of schools that get resources from Gilder Lehrman, free posters for the classroom, access for their teachers to our teacher seminars, access to our documents and other materials online, opportunities for their students to enter essay competitions. I mean, a whole host of opportunities and resources uh, and training uh, for people in affiliate schools. And my goal there is really eventually, I know it sounds wild, but with the help of the web to be reaching every school in America. So I didn't start out, you know, with a a specific vision of where we'd get to, but certainly with an eagerness to respond to opportunity and then pursue things that worked. 